All right, hey, Life Point Church. So this is a first in our history uh, where we are canceling church, um, the service at the physical location because of the coronavirus. Um, however, um, we're coming to you live here on Facebook Live. So this is the first time we've ever done this. Um, it's not the first time that we've uh, canceled church before. Um, funny story is the very first Sunday that I took over as lead pastor, uh, we had a snowstorm and uh, I made the decision to cancel church. So that's kind of synonymous with my tenure as, as lead pastor, I guess, is that my first Sunday I, uh, I canceled service. But, but this, is, this is a new um, endeavor for us and we're, we're definitely walking through some um, just uncharted territory um, as a society with this uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic and the scare that's going on with that. And uh, so, so today what I want to do is I just want to spend the next 15 to 20 minutes together and um, I want you to feel comfortable to um, interact in the comment section um, and um, interact with each other, interact with the things that are being said. That's, that's perfectly fine. Um, interaction is great. So we want that. Um, if you want, you can create a watch party. That way uh, your friends will know that we're live and then they can join us. And um, so, yeah, definitely um, we, are, we are pumped about what, what God is doing, how he... Um, has allowed us to have technology like this um, so that we can continue to get the message out and reach as many people as possible. And when we need to cancel, we can still be together and we can still do life together. We're just doing it digitally, right? So let's go ahead and jump into what we're going to talk about today. And and if you've been with us at LifePoint Church or over the past couple of weeks, you know we're in the middle of a, a, a message series called uh, The Life of Jesus. And, um, and And I've been kind of back and forth with what I wanted to talk about today, because whether or not I wanted to continue with this series, or if I kind of wanted to kind of pause and do a one-off, um, but uh, we were originally going to talk about how the life of Jesus is a life of balance, and um, it was a message I was really excited about preaching, because I believe we all need a little more balance in our life, or some of us, we need a lot of balance in our lives. But with things that are going on, I felt like that I was going to put that off to the side. And from here, we are going to continue on with this series, um, The Life of Jesus. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But we're, we're throwing in an extra week. And, um, you know, in this series, what we're doing, like I said, is we're looking at the life of Jesus and some of the specific characteristics and traits of his life. Because I think one of the things that the world longs to see is people who claim to be Christians actually live like Christians, right? I mean, we, we hear it all the time that we're hypocrites and, we're, and that we're holier than thou and all these different things. But in reality, they just want to see us live like Jesus, to love, to be full of grace and mercy and to meet needs. And that's really what we're, we're talking about in this series. And, and if we're going to live a life like Jesus, we absolutely have to know how he lived, right? I mean, that is a must. You can't live like Jesus if you don't know how he lived. So you need, we need to know how he operated. We need to know what he thought, how he functioned, who he served, who he loved, who he spoke out against, um, what he paid attention to and what he chose not to pay attention to. We, we need to understand who he was so that we can mimic and model our lives after his. And um, if we're going to be followers of Jesus, right, that authentic relationship with him and if we're going to be effective in sharing the gospel we've got to model his life and that's why in this series we've been kind of using this key thought or this phrase that we need to live it don't just script it right don't live it or actually live it don't just script it there's too many of us that that talk all day long about Jesus and our knowledge base. And there's people out there that know so much more about than me about the life of Jesus, but but people are tired of just hearing talk. They want to see action, right? They want to see us actually live it and not just script it. And so I think that with everything that's going on right now with this COVID-19 pandemic and the state of emergency that we're in, um, I feel as if it's a perfect time to look at the life of Jesus and take comfort in the fact that not only did he live a life of compassion, like we talked about in week one, 
not only did he live a life of passion, like we talked about last week, but what we're going to talk about today here on Facebook Live and, and on other platforms is that Jesus also lived a life of confidence. He lived a life of confidence, and therefore he lived a life devoid of fear. Because confidence and fear cannot coexist together. It's, it's impossible. They, they don't coexist. You can't have confidence and be fearful at the same time. For example, you can't say in the same breath that you 100% believe that everything is going to work out just fine and then the next breath say that you're terrified that it might not. It, it doesn't work that way. You can't have confidence and fear at the same time. And Jesus, man, he lived a life of confidence. And in looking up the word confidence, I love the fact that dictionary.com defines confident as full trust, belief in the powers, trustworthiness, and or reliability of a person or a thing. And when we read about and explore the life of Jesus, we see that he both taught confidence and he lived confidence. You see, he fully had trust and belief in the powers and the trustworthiness and the reliability of God the Father. Therefore, he didn't fear. And he taught us equally not to fear, but rather to have confidence. And if we're going to live like Jesus, we have to live that, not just script it. We can't just say we have confidence, but then still walk around being completely afraid and fearful. So we need to live it. Because let's be honest, we can, we can say all day long, all day long that we're confident, or we're confident in this situation, or we're not afraid, but when rubber meets the road, right, when real life happens, we know that deep down, far too many times, man, we're terrified. We're afraid of what people really think about us. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid of something bad happening to, to us or to someone we love. We're afraid of financial loss. Uh, we're afraid of maybe losing our job. And maybe now more than ever, we're actually afraid of the future, right? We're afraid of what tomorrow has in store because this virus has people in an all-out panic. I'm talking a panic. Everything's canceled. It seems like the entire world is canceled. And, and if you don't believe that people are spazzing out, go ahead and go to the grocery. I dare you. Go for it. I did it on Friday. Bad move. It was not good. I mean, you, you go to the grocery and you see a society that is lacking confidence right now. You see a society that's operating in fear because when you go in there, you go look for canned goods. Most of them are gone, except for the ones that are trash. You know, those might still be there. But the good canned goods, bro, they're gone. Bread, gone. Milk, gone. It's, it's gone. Ramen, ramen noodles gone, cleared out. And, 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 and toilet paper, I still don't understand that. If someone could help me understand why toilet paper is like this must have item right now, let me know. But toilet paper, completely gone. You see, we need a wake up call, a reminder that we can in fact have true confidence, that we don't have to be afraid, but we can live a life that is 100% confident in God. And not because of how strong we are. See, it's a lot of times that's how we try to combat fear is by you know, boosting ourselves up of how great we are. But in the reality, it's that we can live a life of Je like Jesus and have confidence because we can fully trust and believe in the powers and the trustworthiness and the reliability of God the Father, just like Jesus did. And you see, when we actually live this confidence, when we live like we trust God, that's when people want to know what's going on with us. That's when they want to know what we have. And that's when we're able to live without fear. We're able to live it and not just script it. All right. So, so let's go ahead and, and take a look. Let's take a look at the life of Jesus and see exactly how he taught us to live with confidence and how he himself 
actually lived it out. How he lived a life of confidence, a life completely devoid of fear. And as we run through these things, man, I really want you to think about this. I want you to embrace this because again, we as a society, even, even this coronavirus aside, we are a very fear-stricken people. We are a fear-driven society. And man, we need to live with confidence because we, if those of us who call ourselves Christ followers, man, we are connected to the Father and we can trust him. So let's check out the life of Jesus. And the first thing that we see is that Jesus, man, he wasn't worried about the storm. Jesus wasn't worried about the storm. In Mark chapter four, after a full day of teaching by the lakeshore, Jesus and his disciples, they went and got in a boat and they were going to head uh, to the other side of the lake. And, and while they were on their way, this, this massive storm you know, hit and then the waves were, were crashing on the boat. The boat was actually taking on water. And man, the disciples, they were freaking out. They definitely didn't have confidence. They didn't have confidence that they were going to make it through that storm. They were, they were spazzed. And, and Jesus... Was he freaking out? (laughs) Nah, man. He was on the back of the boat snoozing. Like he was, he was asleep. So let's pick up the story here in Mark chapter four, um, verse, verse 38. And, um, we see this, it says Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. I love how they go into the detail that he was, you know, his head was on a cushion. He had a pillow and the disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care? that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? He says, why are you afraid? You see, Jesus lived a life of confidence fully trusting that God was in control of all things, no matter how bad it got, even a horrific storm like they were in the midst of. Jesus had confidence in that. He wasn't worried. He was was ready to go because he knew God was in control. He wasn't worried about it. Unlike the disciples, however, who, who were terrified. They were freaking out. He he even asked them, man, why are you afraid? Do you not have faith still? After all that you've seen me do and all that you've done as well, you still have no faith? You don't trust me? You don't have confidence in me? They didn't put it in action. They said they had confidence, but when when the storm hit, that's, that's when they showed their true colors. And for us, man, we find ourselves going through these storms, right? These, these dark and difficult seasons of, of life. And, and we have one of, one or, one of two options um, on how to handle it. We have two different ways that we can handle this. We can either respond like the disciples with panic, anger, doubt, negativity, just down out fear, allowing the storm to get the best of us, or we can respond like Jesus with peace and with faith and with confidence, fully trusting that God has this thing well in control. You see, the tough reality is this, is that you're either in a storm right now, you're coming out of a storm, or you're about to enter into a storm. And I know that's not the most comforting and reassuring thing that you've ever heard me say, but, but it's, it's the facts. It's, it's the hard truth because of the, the fallen world that we live in. But the real question is, is how are you going to choose to respond? Are you going to respond like the disciples? Or are you going to respond like Jesus? I'm telling you, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to let the storm dictate your life. You don't have to be afraid, but you can have confidence in the fact that God has this thing well in control. We have to go to him when the storm hits because he is the one that can bring calm to the storm, right? The second thing that we see in the life of Jesus is that Jesus wasn't worried about daily life. 
he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't worried about daily life and and when i say life and i had this written down here i have life in in um in quotation marks because i i he's not talking about life or death like he's not worried about whether he lives or whether he dies necessarily but rather he's talking about that he's not worried about these little trivial things throughout life uh, the day day-to-day kind of things that we stress out about that we worry about that we're that we let the fear of the what if dictate everything that we do he wasn't worried about that and he doesn't want us to be worried about that and that's exactly why he gave these instructions to his disciples in Luke chapter 12 starting in verse 22 check it out he says it says then turning to his disciples Jesus said that is why I tell you do not worry about everyday life whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For God feeds them. And you, he said, you are more valuable to him than any birds. Then check out what he says in in verse 25. And I think every single one of us need to hear this right now. Verse 25, he says, can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? And if you, and, and if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, if it can't add a single moment to your life, he says, then what's the use in worrying about even bigger things? You see, like Jesus we need to spend our time not worrying about the details of everyday life, all these little things. Now, now I'm not saying that we can just, just say, hey, whatever, it doesn't matter, who cares? I mean, God gave us a brain, right? He gave us motivation, he gave us drive, and we need to make sure that we're doing the things that we're responsible for, the things that he's leading us to do. But at the same time, those little bitty everyday things, we, we have to trust God for. We have to be confident that he's got us, right? We've got to trust that he has us covered, that he's going to provide for us, that he's going to keep us and the ones we love safe, that he's going to bring healing physically, mentally, emotionally when we need it, that he's going to do that. And then when everything else seems to be going just absolutely haywire and crazy around us, you know, we have to trust that God knows what he's doing. You see, we can trust God. We don't have to worry about every single day. That's why Jesus asked the disciples, he said, can, can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? Can it? No, absolutely not. In fact, living in constant fear and worry actually takes away from your life. It's not good for your health and you spend all your time worrying about the what ifs and stressing and being afraid about the what ifs, then you're not out there doing exactly what it is that God created you to do. You see, God did not create you to just survive, to make it through the day to the next day. Now he created you for a purpose, for the here and now. And in order for you to do and be all the things that God created you to do and be, we have to stop wasting our time with worry. We have to stop wasting our time with fear. And when I say this, I'm, I'm talking to myself more than anybody else because as I've said before, I am the king of worrying about little bitty stupid things. But see, if we're going to live a life like Jesus, we don't need to worry. We don't worry about everyday life because we know that God's got us. Because we can trust him and we can have confidence. Therefore, we don't have to worry or be afraid. And the final thing that that we see is that Jesus wasn't worried about anything. I just like wrap this all up into one that Jesus wasn't worried about anything. But why? Why wasn't he worried? Well, Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 38, we see the, the answer when Jesus beautifully, beautifully said this. He says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Nothing, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today 
nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you from separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me say that one more time. That nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that's revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, we have nothing to fear. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not, not a pandemic, not a national emergency, not the whole world shutting down. Nothing can separate you from God. When you connect with him in that personal relationship with him, when you come to know him as your savior, man, you are good. He's got you. And nothing will ever separate that. And nothing will ever change that. That's why Jesus wasn't worried about anything, because he knew that. And because of him and through him, he made a way for us to be able to carry that same banner of not worrying about anything, not being afraid of anything, because we can have the ultimate confidence in God, because he's with us. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. You see, if we're going to call ourselves Christians, right, if you're going to carry that, that name, that, that banner, that reputation, we have to live like Jesus. Therefore, we have to live a life of confidence. We have to push fear aside and fully trust God. And I know that we're currently walking through some, some rough and crazy waters right now, some, some uncharted territory with this coronavirus. But I want you to remember that while we're, we're trying to figure this thing out, Man, God's not shaken. He's not surprised or caught off guard by this at all. He's not caught off guard or surprised by anything, but rather he has this well in control. It may not feel like it right now. It may not seem like it, but he has this thing in control. So let me leave you um, with these final powerful words of Jesus. And I really want you to carry this scripture with you throughout the rest of this week, and as things begin to kind of stress you out or you start feeling that fear creep in, I want you to remember this. John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus said this. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Then he says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus, the Son of God, said, peace I leave with you. Then he made it personal. Then he said, my peace, the peace that I operate in, the confidence that I have in God, completely devoid of fear, that peace, I give it to you. And I want you to understand that if Jesus himself gives you his peace, man, we have nothing, absolutely nothing to fear. Like Jesus, both you and I, we can live a life of confidence. Even when the world around us is going mad, we can live a life of confidence. We don't have to be afraid because God will never leave you, never forsake you. Nothing will separate you from his love. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you for, for one, uh, this incredible technology that you give us that we can connect um, and do life with each other here online. Um, and Lord, uh, we just thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word that we can, in fact, operate and live with confidence, that we don't have to be afraid and that we can trust you and that you're good and that you have our best intentions in mind. So God, I pray for each and every person that's here online right now. I pray for each person that may listen to this in the future as it gets posted. Lord, I pray that you would speak truth to them, you would speak love to them, and that they would receive your peace that you have given us. That we would embrace it during this time and that we would operate in confidence, in wisdom and in confidence. God, give us strength to not be afraid. God, may we 
during this time come together and may we also connect with you like never before. God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying for us. And it's your name we pray, amen. And again, I wanna thank each of you for coming um, on this um, first time ever LifePoint Live uh, online um, and hanging out with us. Again, if um, you're catching this after the fact, make sure you go ahead and, and jump in the comment section. Feel free to dialogue with that. And man, um, I don't know what's gonna happen over the next several weeks, um, but I, what I do know is that I'm not gonna be afraid. I know that God's got this, and we have a phenomenal team at LifePoint Church, and we're gonna make and continue to make the absolute best decisions that we can for your safety, and as well as for finding new and amazing ways that we can continue to engage and connect, whether we meet physically or we're still um, practicing safe, good social distancing. A few quick things before I get out of here. Um, first, um, if you're new to LifePoint Church, maybe you found this um, on Facebook or on one of your friend's uh, streams or whatever it is, um, and if you want more information about LifePoint, go ahead and, and um, you can hit us with a DM and I'll get back with you on that. Or if you have any prayer requests, prayer needs, um, questions, um, if you want to know more about uh, what you need to do to have a relationship with Jesus, again, you can you can leave a comment below. We'll get back with you. Or again, hop into our DMs and um, and myself or one of our team will connect with you as quick as possible. And finally, um, I want to remind you that even though we're not physically meeting in person um, this week, um, if you call Life Point Church home, um, I want you to know that you can. There's still opportunities for you to continue to give faithfully. Um, with your tithes and your offerings. Again, these are for those that call LifePoint Church home. Um, you can go to our website, um, which is lpc502.com. Top right-hand corner, it says Give Online. You click it, it takes you to a safe, secure place where you can give. Um, so we just encourage you to be faithful with your giving. Um, we want to be able to love and serve more people. So come hang out with us with that as well. Uh, man, again, thank you. Uh, we'll keep you up to date via social and our website. Um, if you have questions, feel free to give me a shout, send me a message, um, an email. Um, we will be around. But until we see each other again, whether it be in person or on here, I love you guys. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and wash your hands, man. I'm telling you, 20 seconds at least. Scrub them up good. We love you guys, and we'll see you later.